David Roberts written by Alan McDonald. Dirty Birdie. Bogies. Chapter 1. Birdie. Miss Boot thundered. Are you paying attention? Birdie shot upright. Crack. Ow. He had forgotten he was looking for his rubber under his desk. He peeped out, rubbing his head. Sit down, barked Miss Boot. Now what was I just saying? When? asked Bertie. While you were crawling around under your desk. Bertie racked his brains trying to remember. The truth was he hadn't been following too closely. Whenever Miss Boot started talking, Bertie's mind had a habit of wandering off. Um, you were saying. Bertie looked to Eugene for help. Eugene mouthed something he didn't quite catch. You were saying. About fried eggs. The class sniggered. Eugene whispered in his ear. Oh, Friday. You were saying about Friday Miss Boot folded her arms. Yes, and what's happening on Friday? Do tell us. Bertie hadn't the faintest clue. We're having a day off, he said, hopefully. More laughter. Thump. Miss Boots' fist slammed down on her desk. We are not having a day off. I was talking about our visitor. Can anyone tell Bertie who's coming to school on Friday? A sea of hands rose in the air. Miss Boots' eyes fell on the pale boy bouncing up and down in the front row like an eager poppy. Yes, Nicholas? The mayoress, said Noel Nick. Quite right. I'm glad someone is paying attention, said Miss Boot. Nick smirked at Bertie. Bertie scowled back. Miss Boot went on. It's a great honor to have someone as important as the mayor is coming to our school. I'm sure you're all very excited. Bertie yawned. Why were school visitors always so boring? Why didn't they invite someone interesting for a change like a lion tamer or a brain surgeon? Now, said Miss Boot, eyeing the class, Miss Skinner would like one of our class to do a special job. One lucky child is going to welcome the mayoress in assembly. Who wants to volunteer? The hands shot up again. Bertie couldn't see what all the fuss was about. Noel Nick was jiggling around as if he needed the toilet. Boo, miss, miss. Me, me, he gasped. Miss Boot hesitated. Last time there was a visitor she had chosen Nick to meet them. And the time before. Hands down, she said. Since so many of you are keen, we will put all your names in a hat and draw one out. Everyone wrote their name on a piece of paper and put it in a biscuit tin. Miss Boot drew out one scrap of paper and unfolded it. She read the name scrawled in big letters. She turned white. She looked as if she might pass out. Who? Who is it? Everyone asked. Bertie, groaned Miss Boot. Bertie looked up from doodling on his maths book. What? I wasn't doing anything, he said. Miss Boot sighed. If you were listening, Bertie, you'd know that you've been chosen to welcome the mayoress. Me? said Bertie. Really? Really? said Miss Boot. The bell went for a break. She screwed up the piece of paper in her hand. She needed to find somewhere quiet to lie down. Chapter 2 You? said Dad. You? said Susie. They want you to meet the mayor? Actually, it's the mayor Hess, Bertie said. But why you? asked Susie. 
They had the whole school to choose from. Why didn't they pick someone with half a brain? Bertie ignored this remark. Miss Boot thought I'd be good at it, he said. Meeting Mayor Hesses and that. Making speeches. Dad looked horrified. Surely they don't want you to make a speech. I don't know yet, said Bertie. We're having a practice on Thursday. Mom put an arm round his shoulder. Well, I think it's wonderful, Bertie, she said. I'm very proud of you. Yes, said Bertie, sticking at his tongue at his sister. He hadn't mentioned that he had been selected by pure chance. It was a small detail. Susie still couldn't believe it. Has your teacher got a screw loose? she asked. Does she know what you're like? I don't see why you're making such a fuss, said Bertie. All I've got to do is give her a bunch of old flowers. It's not difficult. Of course it's not, said Mum. But it is the mayoress and she is very important. I've never heard of her, said Bertie. And the whole school will be watching, Mum went on. Oh yes, I forgot, said Bertie. Miss Boot says a man from the Pudsley Post is coming as well. The newspaper? Yes, he's going to take my picture with the Mayor Hess. Good heavens! Is that a good idea? asked Dad. Bertie frowned. He'd expected a bit more enthusiasm. He thought his family would be pleased that his picture was going to be in the paper. I'm sure it will all be fine, said Mom. Just as long as you don't do anything. Silly. Like what? asked Bertie. Burping, said Susie. Or talking with your mouth full, said Dad. And please, 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 Bertie, don't pick your nose, pleaded Mom. I won't, said Bertie. When do I pick my nose? Only every five minutes, said Susie, scornfully. Well, what does it matter? It's my nose, said Bertie. It's not as if I go round picking any old nose. Mom rolled her eyes. You just cannot do it. Not when you're meeting the mayoress. I won't. Or the other thing, said Susie. What other thing? You know eating bogies, said Susie. It's disgusting. I don't. You do. Dad held up a hand. In any case, nose-picking is a horrible habit and it's time you gave it up, he said. I will, said Bertie. But. No buts, said Mum, firmly. I want you to promise. Bertie sighed heavily. I promise, he said. You won't catch me picking my nose again. Chapter 3 Bertie went upstairs to his room, humming to himself. He would promised his parents they wouldn't catch him picking his nose, so he'd just have to make sure he wasn't caught. In any case, he didn't see what all the fuss was about. Everyone picked their nose. His friends certainly did. Bertie and Darren often compared bogeys to see who had the biggest. They'd invented several bogey games, including bogey golf, bogey table football and roller bogey. Grown-ups picked their noses, too. Bertie had seen his dad do it when he was driving. And Miss Boot did it when she was reading a book. He bet even the queen picked her nose when no one was looking. So what was the harm if Bertie sometimes had a good clean out? Talking of which, there was no one about now. Bertie! Mum stuck her head round the door. Remember what you promised. 
I wasn't, cried Bertie. I just had an itch. Mom tooted. I'm watching you. Bertie flopped down on his bed. This was terrible. If you couldn't pick your nose in your own bedroom, where could you do it? Five minutes later, he slipped out of the back door. His top secret hideout was behind the garden shed. Darren and Eugene were the only ones who knew about it and they were sworn to secrecy. Bertie pushed his way in among the bushes and sat down. Alone at last. Now for. Bertie! What are you doing? Dad was staring at him through the shed window. Nothing, said Bertie. I was just looking for Whiffer. He's asleep on the sofa. Come out of there. It's filthy. Bertie drooped back to the house. This was hopeless. His parents wouldn't leave him alone for five minutes. He was actually glad when it was time to go to bed. Mom came up to tuck him in. Good night, Bertie. Night, Mom. Sleep tight. Click. Off went the bedroom light. Peace and quiet at last. No one to disturb him. Bliss. Bertie's finger crept out from under the covers. Bertie, called Mom. Stop picking your nose. Chapter 4 For the rest of the week, Bertie's parents watched him like vultures. He couldn't even lift a hand without Mum Tutang or Dad glaring at him. He tried to find places where he could be by himself. On Tuesday Mum found him hiding in the towel cupboard. On Wednesday Dad caught him in Whiffer's kennel. School was just as bad. Miss Boot made him practice his part for assembly over and over again. She barked orders at him, don't slouch. Hands out of your pockets. Stop mumbling, speak up. By the time Friday came round Bertie was beginning to wish he'd never been chosen. He wished he was sitting with his friends instead of standing at the front with a bunch of droopy flowers. He could see Darren and Eugene pulling faces at him. Darren put two fingers up his nose as a joke. The man from the Pudsley Post was ready with his camera. Bertie shuffled his feet nervously. What if he did something wrong? What if he tripped on the steps? Or trod on the flowers? What if he forgot what to say? The hall was hot and airless. Miss Boot was frowning at him. More than anything Bertie was dying to pick his nose. He always picked his nose when he was nervous and now it was like having a terrible itch which you couldn't scratch. His nose felt bummed up. He was convinced he had a giant bogey poking out of one nostril. But he didn't dare investigate, not with the whole school watching. A door opened and Miss Skinner entered, followed by the mayoress. Bertie had been expecting someone royal like the Queen. But the mayoress could have been one of his grand's friends. She wore a plum-colored dress, which matched her face. Round her neck was a large silver chain. She took a seat while Miss Skinner turned to face the rows of children. We are extremely honored, blah 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 droned Miss Skinner. Bertie had stopped listening. He just noticed no one in the hall was looking at him. They were all gazing up at the mayoress and her silver chain. Go on, said a voice in Bertie's head. One little pick. What harm can it do? Bertie bent his head as if he needed to scratch his nose. It didn't take more than a few seconds. Bertie, hissed Miss Boot. Hurry up. We're waiting. Bertie dropped his hand. Had he been spotted? He glanced round no, 
but Miss Skinner had stopped talking. Everyone was was waiting for him to welcome the visitor. He thudded up the steps and onto the stage. He thrust the droopy flowers at the mayoress. For you Miss Mayor has from all the children, he gabbled in one breath. Oh! Thank you! How kind, smiled the mayoress. Bertie turned away. Everything might have been all right if he'd gone back to his place there and then. But he realized he'd forgotten something. He was meant to shake hands. He turned back and stuck out one sweaty hand. Bertie stared in horror.